Hey, my name is Leah Day, and today I'd like to share with you a little bit about modifying your free motion foot so it fits perfectly on your machine. In this video, I'm going to take this generic free motion quilting foot and modify it specifically for the Janome HD 1000. This is important for you to see because straight out of the package, this foot doesn't really work all that great. But with some simple modifications, you can get it working and it's going to be one of the best quilting feet that you can use. You'll be able to see clearly and it won't bounce up and down on the surface of your quilt. So let's watch the video and learn how to modify this specifically for your machine. So this free motion quilting foot is literally coming straight out of the package and we're going to attach it to the machine. And straight out of the package, no, it's not very well designed, um, but I want to show you how it works whenever you pull it out. Um, the one thing is, you see that big long bar on the top of the foot, you want to attach that so that rests over the needle bar, the needle, the bar that's uh, and screw that's holding your needle in place. That's how that's meant to be attached and basically what happens is when your needle is in the up position the foot is up. Like this is, the presser foot is down right now but the foot is ra raised that high on the surface of your quilt because of the needle bar. And whenever you bring your needle in the down position the foot comes down and really squishes the surface of your quilt. And this is what is really kind of the problem with this foot. It causes the needle bar going up and down hitting that bar causes it to bounce and you can see right here it's very hard to see what you're doing with that bouncy movement going on while you're trying to create designs. It also forces you to stitch very fast and for many beginner free motion quilters that's quite difficult. So I really hate that hopping and I really also can't see what my needle is doing so let's take this off and first fix that hopping problem. To stop the foot from hopping, all we really have to do is bend back this bar that's at the top of the foot. So I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm just going to grab that end and bend it backwards. Now the bar is actually quite thick, so you're going to have to be kind of aggressive with this and um, be careful with yourself, you know, as you're using this tool and bending it backwards. But uh, really it doesn't have to be bent back that far. You just want to kind of get this nice U shape on the top. And then I'm kind of just tweaking it a little bit, trying to make sure that it's uh, nice and bent back and going to be stable. You just want to make sure it doesn't fall off the foot. That's really important. You need that bar to stay on there, otherwise the whole foot will fall apart. So now let's adjust it. Remember how I said that the foot rests down too low on your quilt whenever it's in the down position? Well, now with the bar bent backwards, that's where it's going to rest from now on, way too low and squishing the surface of your quilt. So to fix that, I install a little rubber band right here. I'm going to do four loops in that space between that bar and that spring area of the foot. And what this does is this actually lifts the surface of that foot uh, up just a little higher. And that way it's not squishing your quilt. And the cool thing is, is that as silly as a rubber band seems, it's wonderful for perfectly adjusting your foot. So no matter um, kind of what machine you use, you can adjust simply by adding or removing loops of the rubber band. Now, I just simply put the foot on and finger tighten the screw on the foot and see how that's going to work. I just kind of push the quilt around. You can see right here, it's kind of hanging up a little bit. It's just not high enough. It needs to be lifted by maybe one single loop. So I'm going to take off all that excess of the rubber band, push the foot up, and I'm just going to install one more loop in that space so the foot rests a little higher. Now if the foot ends up too high, you might notice that your thread starts breaking or shredding whenever you're free motion quilting or you start having some really crazy thread problems like tension issues. That could mean that your foot is actually too high now so you just simply take away a loop from the top of the uh, foot bar. So now I've got the foot back installed I'm going to push it around and yep that looks pretty perfect. So now let's see what it looks like whenever we free motion quilt after bending that bar back. See how much nicer and smoother this is? You can move and see what you're doing but we still can't see through this plastic bar area on the front of the foot so let's now learn how to clip that out. 
This is a really important part because having an open toe where you can see the needle on your machine is super important and it's very easy. There's these two little red marks on the foot and they kind of act as my guides for clipping them open, which is kind of funny. Uh, I doubt the manufacturer really intended for that. So I just take a pair of jeweler's clippers and I use those red marks and I just kind of go on an angle so that way I have a nice diagonal cut right over those red marks and my clippers are kind of dull so it's going to take me a couple times pressing down until this breaks but um, just take your time I've never actually broken a foot like um, broken it so that it couldn't be used so just take your time and I'm sure that this is going to work just fine once I break the foot open and I remove that middle plastic bar, I just simply take a fingernail file or a little bit of sandpaper and smooth those rough edges so that way the foot doesn't catch on your thread or your quilt. So here you can see it is so much easier to use and see this foot. Um, no more hopping, a nice open toe, we can see our needle, we can see our thread, we can see the quilt and it's moving so much easier. Now contrast this with how the foot moved and worked when we first started this video. Um, this is still with the hopping and with the closed toe, it's very difficult to see. And here again is what happens after you've modified your foot. It's a very simple modification. It's not difficult to do this yourself and then adjust it specifically for your machine. Like I said before, you know the foot is resting too low when it's squishing the surface of your quilt, when you can't easily move it. And you know it's resting too high if you don't have enough control or if your thread starts breaking. So that's it for modifying this free motion quilting foot. I really hope that you'll try this yourself. It's not a very expensive foot and it will certainly save you money by buying a cheaper generic foot and modifying it rather than the name brand more expensive foot. To find this foot as well as a generic patchwork foot and a generic walking foot, go to daystyledesigns.com.